dear students i welcome all of you in the session of traffic engineering and management so we have been discussing about the module number last that is particular highway capacity now there is one more one more module that is remaining to be covered that is module number 3 that states about the lightel and williamson some theory so we will be completing the module number 9 and we will be beginning with the module number 3 in this particular session so i have kept the video of module number 3 because that will carry the entire part of the session name of this particular module is light hill and willingham witham sons theory okay or withams theory so what we are going to cover in this particular session is we are going to cover level of service and the remaining things of level of service and then we will be beginning with the module number 3 see just wait for a minute so let us begin the session see we have learned that the level of service is divided into six types based on the particular traffic flow and users perspective we have learned that the particular lois a is called as free flow lois b level of service b is called as reasonably free flow lois c is called as stable operation lois d is called as borderline unstable operation lois e is called as extremely unstable operation and lois f is called as breakdown so this is these are the things that you have to keep in your mind that a is called as free flow b is called as reasonably free flow c is called as stable operation d is called as borderline unstable operations e is called as extremely unstable operation and f is called as breakdown operations now let us learn the various criteria level of service for different types of transportation network if freeways are there in the rural area then lois a will have the operating speed of 100 kmph and pcu will be 700 b will have 95 kmph speed and 1100 pcu c will have 90 kmph speed and 1550 pcu d will have 75 kmph and pcu will be 1850 e will have 50 to 60 this will have 2000 f will have 50 kmph and pcu are not defined in this particular category because it is the last category of that then if the two lane rural highways are being provided then lois l will stand for 100 kmph speed and service volumes per hour will be 420 b will have 90 kmph speed and 750 service volume per hour c will have 80 kmph and 1200 volume per hour d will have 60 kmph 1800 volume per hour e will have 50 kmph and 2800 volume service volume per hour and f will have less than 50 and it will have 2000 approximate service volume per hour if urban roads are there or urban streets are there then lois a will have 80 kmph speed with 0.60 volume capacity ratio b will have 40 kmph speed and 0.70 volume per capacity ratio c will have 30 kmph speed and 0.80 volume per capacity ratio d will have 25 kmph speed and 0.90 volume capacity ratio e will have 25 kmph speed and 0.95 volume capacity ratio and f will have the 15 kmph speed with, with more than one volume capacity ratio so these are the criteria that are important with respect to the urban streets with respect to the level of service now if multi lane road is there from the rural highway perspective level of service a will have operating speed of 100 kmph and 650 service volumes per hour the b level of service will have 90 kmph speed and 1000 service volume per hour c will have 75 kmph speed and 1300 service volume per hour d will have 60 kmph speed with 1600 service volume per hour e will have 50 kmph speed with 2000 service volume per hour and f will have less than 50 so these are the criteria that are related to the multi lane rural highways now there are various factor that we need to learn that affect the capacity and level of service so the factors are like uh, the roadway factors are there then uh, traffic factors are there speed and travel time is there 
freedom to travel with the desired speed is also one of the factors important factors then on the particular driving comfort and convenience is there operating cost is there so so, so there are various kind of factors which are being uh, which are playing an important role as far as the capacity and level of service are concerned so the first that is the road factor the first criteria is that the lane way width see is that if the lane way width is up to 3.65 meter then it is ideal for the smooth flow there will be smoother flow of the particular traffic but if the width is reduced then it will have the impact of reduce the capacity with respect to the elbows to the 25 percentage means what does it mean what is the meaning of the statement is that if the width lane way width uh, is particular 3.65 meters and it is smoother but reduced lane way width rather than 3.65 meter will reduce the capacity up to 25 percentage the second point is about it is called as lateral clearance so number of times it can happen there are various kind of sign post light poles and parking or the parked car can be act can act as the obstruction in order to affect the capacity so this kind of parameter such as sign post is there light pole is there parked vehicle is there these things reduces the capacity if they are placed in 1.83 meter from the edge of the lane line so these are the important parameters that we need to consider <coughs> then the third thing is about shoulders see shoulders we all know the shoulder is called as emergency lane you have learned that thing in the section of highway transportation in the transportation engineering of last semester so these shoulders are very important as they help to maintain the traffic flow if the shoulders are of paved type so that is called as paved shoulder paved shoulder of 1.2 meter can increase the lane width by 0.3 meter so number of times it can happen that if the paved shoulders are there then it can increase the lane width then the next situation is about this particular surface condition that if the deteriorated pavement is there that means if the defects such as cracks is there then pothole or raveling or rutting or edge breaking if this kind of things are being observed on the particular surface of road then it can be said that the particular capacity with respect to this particular thing can be reduced so these things can have to be considered while defining the capacity and alloys then comes the alignment criteria that if sharp curves are there, there like this or like this then this thing can cause the reduced speed of the vehicles because that reduces the side distances and due to that the capacity of accommodated vehicles on this particular roadway will be reduced because very less number of vehicle will take their overtake and will consume the particular space of this particular stretch during the time of crossing this kind of curves so alignment such as sharp curves and restrictive side distances reduces the capacity and then comes the point of gradient see gradient number of times adversely affect the lane capacity because if the gradient is like this if the road is in particular gradient it is in higher gradient then the vehicles will the vehicles that will use the particular stretch will be very less in number so what we have learned is we have learned that various factors affect the capacity and level of service we have learned the roadway factor traffic factor speed and travel time factor freedom of travel the particular desired speed driving comfort and convenience and operating cost we also learn the various kind of alloys and its names now let us begin with the third chapter the name of the third chapter is called as lighthim and bithamson's theory or bithams theory so this is very small unit and there are very few things that are important from this particular segment so generally what this particular unit targets we are beginning with the unit number 3c by drawing the analogy between the flow of fluids and the flow of traffic see two things are compared 
fluid flow that you have learned in the fluid mechanics and flow of traffic so here two things are being considered flow of fluid and flow of traffic so by drawing the analogy between this flow of fluid and flow of traffic the traffic flow can be continuously understood so here the flow of fluid is compared with the traffic flow now the light hill and witham have contributed to this particular topic by their theory which is based on the kinematic waves so what we are going to learn the thing that we are going to learn the theory that we are going to learn is called as light hill and witham's theory that is comparing the flow of fluid and flow of traffic and that is primarily based on the kinetic uh, sorry kinematic waves now as each and every theory is having certain limitations so there are limitations of this theory also that this limit the limitation of this theory is that it is based on the continuous flow approach in fluid dynamics and thus represents the limiting behavior of a stochastic process of a large population which in this case the total number of vehicle therefore this theory is applicable to large scale problem only and principally to the distribution of traffic on the long crowded roads means this theory assumes that just like the flow of fluid the flow of tra traffic is also continuous that is called as continuous flow but we all know that not all roads are experiencing continuous flow of traffic so this theory is only applicable to the large scale problem and principally to the distribution of traffic on the long crowded roads now there are two assumptions that we need to consider in this particular theory that is the equation of continuity is valid continuity equation is valid such that law of conservation of vehicle holds good we know that what is the particular law of conservation of energy what is the law of conservation of energy that energy is neither created and nor destroyed it can just be transferred from one place to another or one form to another so here in this case they have stated the law of conservation of vehicle so continuity equation they have uh, considered they have validated the existence of continuity equation and just like fluids and just like the energy conservation theorem they have established the fact that the law of conservation holds good for this particular purpose so that inflow will be inflow and outflow will be similar with the plus or minus criteria of storage so ultimately inflow will be outflow plus or minus inflow will be up outflow plus or minus storage this is what they have taken as the first consideration and second assumption they have made is that at any point on the road the q that is flow is the function of concentration k so this two assumptions they have made now we will be learning about the uh, equations in the next session thank you